Rationally, will we turn to speak with a new humility and recreate structures within our own communities for sustainability? Or will we return to an illusion? And in a way, it's a matter of awakening of sounds to a new reality and responding to it. I mean, uh, did I say greatest show on Earth? Maybe, like, it's an alright show. Probably not the best, but, you know, we try. We try. Welcome to another episode of Kang Pirate, hosted by none other than your boy, Defang Blow. I mean, Defang Go. I mean, whatever. We're having a discussion today with somebody that I ain't talked to in a long time. But he's a good dude. Kind of a funny character, um, existing throughout time within the Cicada 3301 mystery. Yes, we are talking to a guy, his name's Richard Miller. Yeah, dude, douche fango in the house right there, GS Crippler, you know what I'm saying, fuck that guy. Anyways, yeah, fuck that Defango guy, he sucks. So, I'm here, we got, he's already on the line, we were just like bullshitting a little bit, I told him, I was like, yo dude, I just bought a Prius, and he was really happy for me. So I got, I got a new car that hopefully isn't going to be... A piece of shit, but you know, kind of happy about it. I'm kind of happy about it actually. So, anyways, we're here, we're now, and I'm going to bring our boy in. Yes, I'm gonna bring it. Oh, wait, I hit the wrong button. Fuck, hit the wrong button. I was muted. I'm deafened. Hey, what's up? Yo, yo, what's cracking? G, long time no see. How's what it been going? Oh, it's been going all right, dude. You know, just like living life, trying to get it, get over all of this stuff. You know, watching Cicada movies and shit. You know, just hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. What you been up to? What you been up to, player? Same shit. What, what, like going to school and being a nerd? Yeah. That's cool, man. Are, are, aren't you graduated? Haven't you been in school for like thirty years or some shit? Yeah. Something like that, about 30 years. I just keep getting degrees, and then I can't do anything with them, but they give me scholarships, so I get more degrees. So you just keep getting degrees? Man, I need to get on this degree game or whatever. I'd be like, <laughs> I could get a couple masters. Maybe people would take me seriously. Oh, he's got a PhD. Yeah. Think that would, you yeah, think it would be, you think it would happen? Dr. DeFango. Dr. Or Dr. Fango. Kang now. Uh, Dr. Kang. Well, you know, we don't, we say Defango. We're back. We're just going back into it slowly. Like, I'm going to slowly start working the channel back into that. But, all right. You know, like, shit's been going, or, you know, I've been trying. I've been trying. So, 
Obviously, we haven't talked to you in a while. There's a lot of things that we should be uh, discussing because, I mean, I haven't really chatted on you on most of this stuff because I figured you made a statement about certain things and decided that that was going to be your, you know, thing. But I figured, you know, let's get you on the horn. Let's talk sans everybody else. You know, I invited Arturo yeah. to stop by if you wanted to just because, you know, he deserves he deserves, a, you know, at least a little bit of a. Yeah. Come on over, bitch. You know, like we ain't gonna fuck with you. Come on over, I, talk I to the doctor. He's come, but... <laughs> yeah, I doubt he's gonna come either. But you know, I still invited him because you know I wanted him to be here. I'm not exactly I like mad. Him. Yeah, I invite him. You know, it's just like I always want to get invited to the party, and you know, he's obviously, regardless of whatever we say and how much we make fun of him, he's still part of the cicada party in his own special okay. way in his own special way and thanks to tree chat for the two dollars through super chat thanks for the good evening good evening to you so i guess the first thing that we should even start out with is uh what are you so what is going on with these nfts bro because um people have asked me about it and i've just been all like i don't really know other than i'm pretty sure that somebody gave up some rights to something or something can you at least explain or give us some in, some un insight as to how the heck this uh, sexy looking babe got all these th got all these NFTs out there? Yeah, so yeah, Whoever Anna this? Cooper and Acoin bought all the intellectual property rights between me and Thomas for Sevens Exposed, and yeah, I mean, I, I got him to sell his IP, so it's a victory in my book. What? So w w wait, how the fuck do you guys know Acon? Uh, I know Mike Tankle. He's the co-founder, oh. but I don't know Akon. I haven't talked to Akon. Oh man, dude, that's uh, who I'd be chopping it. I'll be like, you know where? Be like, Akon, yeah, let's party, bro. Message me. Like yeah, we're working together. Just, just call me, dude. Yeah, we're working together now. Hit me up, man. Let's get some shit going. Well, that's cool, dude. I mean, I was trying to figure it out. I didn't want to like drop information that you weren't willing to share yourself. That's probably part of the reason I wanted you to come on here because. That's a pretty big, like, thing. You guys sold your IP from Sevens Exposed, meaning all the stuff from the 2017 puzzle and on now belongs to them. Oh, so, yeah, it's in support of Africa now. It's in support of Africa. Is that what this action yep. thing is all about? Is that what it is? Because, like, I thought yeah, I looked it, it up. Because I was like, how do I even buy this shit? So, it's supposed to be the central currency of... Uh... Akon City. Akon's making a city in Africa. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean What? He's making a city? Yeah, Akon City. Uh that sounds dope. I bet it'll be probably pretty lit and shit. I mean crazy. Yeah, it looks like fucking Wakanda. Yeah, it could be like Wakanda. That would make a lot of sense, dude. Give me some vibranium or whatever. I'll hang out with. I'll I'll hang out at Wakanda. Do whatever they want. That's fine. Yeah. So, I guess since we're talking about these NFTs, so these particular NFTs, what do you know about them besides that these guys put them out? Like, did you have any input or anything like that on anything that got put out, or is it just all of them? Yeah, so the, uh, there's still some treasure out there and there's geo coordinates in the NFTs and it's kind of like a lottery raffle where you buy them and then it may not have anything, but it may have a prize and yeah. A lottery the raffle? What do you mean? You, you couldn't have, this is going to be the same NFT for each and every single one of them. No, there's 33 and there's one winner in the set. So you got to buy all 33 if you want to win. Yeah, or you could just get lucky. They just buy the right one? Yeah. Well, So you did work on these then? No, I didn't. Okay, so then we can discuss. Because I was like looking at them. I, I just thought it was weird because, you know, they're all videos, right? So, or at least the ones that I've seen are videos. Mm -hmm. So, like... I'm like, they're, where, where are you hiding? Like, are they, like, fucking hiding shit inside the video for the NFT? Like, you know, Veracrypt status? Like, what the fuck? Because this is not something that we've ever done. in the top left corner or something. That's, that's in Braille, there. dude. That's Braille. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> it looks like Braille. 
Actually, probably I probably bro. I have no idea what they did. <laughs> yeah, it just was kind of weird. So you don't even know if they've even sold any of these things. Uh, they've sold a couple from what I've heard, but not many. So, oh, I mean, dude, for selling it for point one eth or whatever, they sell one of those. That's some money right there, son. Oh, that's very yeah. interesting. Very, very interesting. So I don't make anything off it though. Well, I figured you did it. I guess Thomas doesn't make anything off of it either, other than where you already nope. made off of it. Yeah. Interesting. So. So basically, we're looking at the the next person that funded fucking Schoenberger here, huh? That that fucker. That's fine though. It's okay. It's not gonna be all. Well, if it was anything like my cut, it wasn't enough to make rent, so it wasn't that. Much. <laughs> That's not good. Yeah. Oh no, man, that sucks. Yeah, dude, I don't even know. I just bought a well, new car. Same thing and when I crazy. signed over my rights to Alan uh, for the movie. Yeah, he made a hundred bucks, but yeah, he made a hundred dollars. Yeah, but I just didn't want fucking to him to get trademark or copyrighted. So I'm like, yeah, I'll just sign over. He said, well, we need to make a receipt. So all right, just give me a hundred bucks. I don't care. Give me a hundred dollars. Here's the receipt. So wait a minute, you sold the your rights to the movie for a hundred dollars? Are you stupid? But. You could ask. Uh, it was, you could um, ask him for a G, man. Come on. No, it's just for redistribution. So I still have owner, or I still had ownership at the time. It was just so they could use the images. Hmm. That makes sense. And so now these guys, like Anna Cooper and Acon, are they're they're basically just allowing it to move forward. Then that's yeah. an interesting way of getting around Marcus and his crew. Yeah, because they kind Which, of own the trademark now right still at least that's what no, i understand michael Levine owns half, so. <laughs> but then then again it's like do they kind of deserve it right yeah they do, they do but the the trademark is only for online games of chance so it's not even for args um <laughs> it's for gambling websites essentially it's a gambling website well I mean, to be perfectly honest, my experience in Cicada 3301 was a lot like gambling. Yeah. I mean, I still got these letters and shit that Thomas gave me for the Sevens Exposed stuff. Like, you know, I, I keep thinking back and everybody's got it all wrong. Like, even, you know, poor old the stat, which is why we want, I wanted to invite him to be on. But I always go back to that first year, and you know, like, I want to know... I guess that's where we should start because it's Sevens Exposed, right? You know, like, yeah. what happened in 2016 that started you guys off? You know, I know I've read the emails or whatever and shit. You know, I've tried to keep most of that stuff on the cuff or whatever. But, you know, it's out there. Not like somebody's posting it to academia.com or anything like that. But, you know, what start? You know, what got you involved with Thomas on this particular situation? You know, what happened? Uh, he needed a cryptographer for Pi Day, so March 13th, 2017, and I said, okay, I'll do it, and yeah, that's how I started. Mm, that's funny. So, like, before then, though, they were running a puzzle already. They had, like, the who is Bob Creamer shit. Like, I remember yeah. going back, you know, hold on, I got my fucking shit up here. Why am I not looking at it? Because oh, I still have all of it, right? I still have all of it. Yeah. So, yeah, from like um, for January, February, I wasn't part of Sevens Exposed. Actually, Sevens Exposed wasn't even around by then. I did the initial drop for that, but well, in 2017, that's when they were running. That like when I got pulled in was before that point, right? Like somebody did the yeah. floods approaches probe. Like I don't know if you can see what's going on yeah. on the screen, but I can actually screen share in Discord for you. Hold on a second, you can uh, if that might actually work for you a little bit better than what. You're yeah, because I don't think I could look without uh, without turning the volume on. Then we have audio feedback <laughs> from the stream. But you should, yeah, you wouldn't have the. There you go. So I'm streaming in Discord for you right now. So it's like starting out. It was 2017. There was supposed to be a 4chan image that was posted. Yeah. And this is the image right here. Thanks, Tree Yeah, so I wasn't a part of the flood approaches. 
Hmm. So that's some interesting information right there. And wait, Tree Trap just sent five bucks. He said, Richard, I was wondering if you have something extreme to hide. I asked because you claim large parts of cryptography in Cicada 3301. You don't have to answer that or anything like that, but I'm pretty sure that us just going through this answer that question. I don't have anything to hide. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have anything to hide other than our faces, but I don't hide my face. Neither does he. So, lick our balls. <sighs> so you didn't have anything to do with this. So that's kind nope. of interesting because there was a whole bunch of stuff that I was leading up before that that was intertwined with the Mojave phone booth. I'm sure you remember that shit, right? Yeah. So, like, that was probably more or less Blake and Lucky that were working with Thomas to get the first part of this puzzle going, right? That's the way that yep. I see it in my mm -hmm. eyes, because, like, at first, when I was doing the puzzle, I did it, you know, I knew that it was probably not going to be legit legit because there obviously wasn't a PGP key or anything like that. But then again, I remember the first PGP key they used was a SHA-1 PGP key. Yeah. And, you know, in 2017, we we're at DEF CON and we were talking about SHA-1 collisions and shit like that. So it was just a little interesting to me that it was kind of like roundabout right that, but kind of an interesting throwback, I guess. So I guess most of this first beginning stuff, I guess I'm like scrolling through everything right now that we're going to trying to get to the point where you. Yeah, probably, that's where I started. It was that right here. image of. Uh, yeah. 314 in 2017, the sloth, the mayor, the clues, right? Yeah. Slot the bait. This was yep. that story flesh puzzle. Yeah, and then was the remember the future clock cipher before that? Because I feel like it was, and that's where I started. Uh, I think it might have been actually. I don't know. Actually, I think that was after it because I remember I put that out, but I didn't actually solve it. I just kind of like guessed it. Oh yeah. And then everybody was like, well, how'd you figure that out? I was like, I don't know. Somebody fucking messaged me. And they were just like, what about Remember the Future? And I was like, yeah, that fits. Let's just use that. Yeah. Interesting. So, huh. So this is where you began. What were you thinking when you were putting this together? Uh, so, just about, like, fundamental cryptography. Um... This was uh, Polybius square, and then you you compare two values with the XOR function, and then I can't see the last equation, so I don't remember exactly what I did. It's like CT equals E, little tiddly, pair or pi, and then bracket number plus bracket E, tiddly, pi. It's like a weird thing. You can't see the whole thing. Oh, no, I'd have to check my emails to find a solution. Oh, dude, I don't know. This is the one thing that I remember that got... This is where everybody got stuck, actually. Yeah. 2017, because I was stuck on this one. The only thing that I knew that even made any sense was the, the little clock hand thing here. Yeah. But I do remember that people were, you know, trying to use that on multiple different things. And as far as I can tell, it was like... You know, we were using it with the eye that came from, like, a picture that was before that, but we didn't actually know if that was what it was supposed to be or if it was going to be a different, you know, actual clock yeah. that we were supposed to be using. You know, it was kind of actually pretty interesting. And I remember, too, that this was something that, like, Discord was actually more... The Discord was more or less solving when we were going through it because I hardly got any of this right here done. Like, I couldn't figure this shit out. Although I was working, yeah. pre I remember I was working pretty hard with like the hands and shit, but like any of the stuff with the Zoring functions or the actual equation, that wasn't anything that I even had touched. So it was probably very, that was interesting to me. And I feel like a lot of people kind of missed that at least because there was a lot more that came after it. I think this is like right here was the actual, this is the actual solution that they came up with right here. Yeah, so it was Ara Jakarta, which was uh, 171141, whatever. And that was just a uh, letter, which was a junta, like a, a revolutionizing kind of um, movement. And I guess for me at this point, it, it was more about culture jamming than it was about an actual revolution. But 
Well, a lot of people picked it up about Revolution, but I guess I could see where you were going with this because, you know, when you you got involved in 314, and that's when I think everything was really starting to heat up big time because before that point, you know, I wasn't really getting a lot of people watching what I was doing going on into the puzzles, but it wasn't up until this point that this thing came out that I think everybody kind of started coming together, and this is when... I don't know, like things started <coughs> happening. <coughs> people were subscribing, you know, more and more people were starting to work. And I think even during this point, too, is when like the Cicada Solver Wiki and those guys decided that they were going to get a little angry about what was going on over here, because it wasn't long after that, that this, that they, they you know, somebody dropped that fucking PGP sign message. And that yeah. kind of gave everybody, you know, like that kind of halted everything that all the most of the progress that was going on, actually. Mm -hmm. But it, it moved back, I believe, you know, it came back like a belief. Like, here's the little clock yeah. thing that you were talking about. Yeah. The circumferences shut on pie. That was the actual website that we had to go to afterwards. So, like, you put this up, right? Like, you're the guy that was hosting yeah. this. Okay, cool. Uh, Yeah. It's like I remember finding the timer, you know, like what what were the, what were the elements that you were trying to at least elicit or elucidate from this particular piece? Uh, I I just used a, a clock cipher because it was simple. You could coordinate the hands to each uh each section of binary, so um you, you could get a, a full letter from each of the clock hands and i just thought it was an interesting way to start it off because it was kind of a simple concept but it's funny still got the that is funny though well i mean this is what was leading up to the june 1st puzzle right like 314 we yeah. got this long freaking timer and this website, everybody was like oh and i remember going to june 1st and june 1st was a very overlap situation and i think that a lot of people still don't understand that you know there was separation and there was it was not separation between all the different stuff you know like there was the cicada puzzle that was running and then there was you know the other shit that some other people that were actually involved in it kind of yeah. made me wonder a little bit because this was the same time that we were having to call the mojave phone booth itself mm -hmm. and you know that right there was also another thing that seemed a little bit different. Not different, more different than what we had seen in the other puzzles, like from the history. Because most of the time for what the Cicada puzzles, it was like, you'd call the number, the number wouldn't pick up, there would be a message, you know, the voicemail would play with a little something or other telling you to do something, and then that was basically it. Here it was a little bit different because I guess their little phone booth system is uh, set up a to be, well very intricate i guess because i mean people were actually getting messages back everybody was freaking out trying to figure out what the little hash key that they were getting was because each one was individual for different people i mean it was a pretty interesting stuff so you did you ever have any contact with lucky or blake on any of that stuff uh yeah uh, we coordinated so we could get the the website out from the mojave phone booth but it's not it's not actually the Mojave phone booth. It's just the old number. It's now a VoIP. Um, so voice over IP, and that's how uh, like Lucky totally and Blake set everything up. Yeah. And the the reason why there's a, that key at the end of the end draws near and then that, that hash, it's a hash just because they didn't want to bombard the phone company with a bunch of messages that look like spam, so they would have to put the hash at the end. So it didn't get flagged and still went through. <laughs> oh well that actually is a very interesting thing very yeah interesting thing. a lot of people thought that that was part of the puzzle but no it's literally just a hash so they don't get marked for spam oh my god dude i, I would kept on trying to tell people that i'd be like yeah i wouldn't worry about that this seems probably like you know it was like seems like they're just sending you like a key or something for like your account on the server if you change yeah. phone numbers or something but that is even simpler i guess in a lot of ways <laughs> oh my god well that's cool actually you know this is really good so even more so i guess what 
we kept on going through the puzzles. I think there was this. There was the remember the future thing. I remember I made that. Yep. You know, everybody was all jazzed. I'd see, still seen that in a lot of different spots, too. But, like, this was also, I believe, made it into that Cicada 3301 movie. Not the remember the future part, but at least, you know, the clock. No, but the clock cipher was, yeah. Yeah, the clock cipher and, was um, in there. Yeah. And remember the future? The, the reason why Elon Musk um tweeted that out is because it's a quote from a book that he liked as a child it has no ties to us uh it's just a book reference that we both used just a coincidence so well who used yeah. it first did you say it and then he said it and then everybody was like oh, yeah we said said it, it. then he said it yeah oh. and then so yeah maybe? people tried to say like oh elon musk is connected to seventh exposed but no it was just a coincidence <laughs> Lucky ass coincidence. Yeah. What book? Um, I don't remember the name of the book. If you just YouTube uh Elon Musk talks about his favorite book or whatever, it'll come up with the book. Uh, I don't remember the name of it. Hmm. Well, I guess it did have a little bit of connection to something because you were talking about space shit later on. We'll get to that, I guess. Because what, we're coming up to like March 21st, so it was like my birthday, and then there was the songs, right? We had that deep sound MP3, or was it 314, 17? Because there was yeah. a sound, you know? What was up with the sound? Who made it? Was that you too? Yeah, that was me. I, I uh, So for this, I just used uh, deep sound and Coagula, and Coagula is a... Uh, Spectrogrammetry software. It's open source and it lets you just turn images into a spectrogram, which they could see from uh, something like Sonic Visualizer. Same thing that they used in the 11XB Plague Doctor video. So that's the one from Parker Wright and the that really yeah. crazy freaking video that everybody. Yeah, was and then they used about. it. Also, Apex Twin used it. I mean, it's it's been used a couple times, but it's Coagula that does that. I know Apex Twin did it. They had that one like song that's got like the alien pops up yeah. out of there. Sounds all crazy. Ah, mm. ah, so okay, Robert Flood, Musical Encryptions. Yep. You guys were also really into that. So, where did this come from? Was this like you working with Thomas, or is this more you just doing stuff on your own? Uh, this was me working with Thomas. Thomas would say that there was musical encryption, but I, I'm not sure what the solutions would be, if anything. But Yeah, for a lot of them, I never even thought about it. I mean, do you know if anybody still has access to that ProtonMail email address? Uh, someone does, but it's not me. Oh, was it you? Not you? Not you? No, oh, I... I deleted it. Someone picked it up after the puzzles were done. Oh, that's funny. Well, I figured that somebody yeah. would probably have picked it up if nobody deleted it. Or if somebody deleted yeah. it. <laughs> I, also, we had the 22.wave, which I remember, which was just remember the future. There wasn't anything else in that. Um, I don't think so. I mean, we didn't get anything for BitWalk. All we had on that Stegogram was the remember the future. And f it was even yeah. in the same font, like that, almost the same font that I was using too. Weird. Yeah, I'm not sure what it was. Interesting. Because, like, this is all the beginning parts of the actual puzzle right here. And, like, this point, I still hadn't even really talked to any of you guys just yet. Yeah. Like, I hadn't even have met, I hadn't even have talked to Thomas up until this point because I didn't meet him until, like, early uh april because that's when i brought him the spear back you know went pick no that's when i went and picked up the spear from that fucker that's what i remember mm. so like i guess that's where this next part kind of gets into is because you guys were sending us emails like you would send everybody yeah. emails talk about the feast of assumptions and shit like what the fuck was what, what where were you guys where were you guys at uh so we it wasn't only emails we also used um uh voip and then we got a uh, back collection of some of the phone numbers not all of the phone numbers lucky uh received text messages from and then we also had 
emails from other people um and yeah we just collected and sent out these clues and it was to a lot more than just the couple people uh who were who said that they received something because we sent out a couple thousand but but not everybody was connected to us you know like the only people that were in my group my group was pretty small considering that it was much smaller than the overall amount of people that were actually i believe trying to solve yeah Oh, although I think like one of my favorite parts is the cipher disk thing that you guys were working on. That was oh yeah, I made the cipher disk. This is probably one of the most interesting parts of it because it was the closest thing that took us into something that other folks hadn't even been playing around with. I would have to have said. I just don't. Yeah. You know, we had the Alberti cipher disk, which your disk was different. Obviously, because you guys didn't have the numbers, and then you used, yeah. you guys had different um, actual runes and such that you were using for it, but it made a lot of sense. And this one right here, you know, because like we had to go through the cipher disc, and then after we figure out the cipher disc, we could get the rotors, and then we actually had to go through um, the Enigma machine to figure that out. And that was probably yeah. one of the most interesting, you know, parts of the puzzle. This is the part where I thought a lot of people were working on it. Pretty interesting. Right? Like this yeah. right here, is this also something that you put together? Yeah, I put all this together. So just like everything that we're doing. This is you're the one that's putting it together, put making it. Yeah. And so like you know you did were you keeping track of who was actually getting through and solving all of this stuff and like talking to them or was there something else going on? No, I was in a couple discords and I would push people, but I wasn't in too many and Yeah. Uh, so you were you were just like fucking with people under an alt? Yeah. Son of a bitch. <laughs> See, this is right here, the one thing that everybody uh was really, really into I actually did a puzzle for resistance where I tried to do something very similar and try to take it a step farther. Yeah. Because, you know, for all the stuff that you guys were doing, you know, most of the time there wasn't any outcast data, but I was trying to work on more like making things into puzzle boxes. So it was like the image goes to a song that goes to, or no, the image opens up to a zip that's got a song and something else in it. And each of those things opens up into something. And then if you put them all together, it all opens up into another file, like stuff like that. Yeah. That's what I was really trying to figure out and understand because I know I had a lot of trouble with it in the past because it was really hard to find the right kind of algorithms to work with other ones or encryption methods to work with other ones. So like you weren't stepping on losing data and I've only seen that CAS five seems to work pretty good for that for some reason, which I don't actually understand it, but you know, this, you know, what I use, what I use. Yeah. I, th- that was kind of a simple cipher. I think uh, the vault seven, uh, drop with the, the disc. Cause it was just using the encryption and decryption key in, uh, quadrants. So it says function, a quadrant run quadrant two, uh, encryption times decryption is a function of, uh, X plus Y equals vinegar. Uh, Finagre one, and then uh, your your mod equals the uh, first minus second plus third plus second. So then it gives you the key twenty two, and you use twenty two to solve everything, and then you use RSA at the end. That's what Revist, Shammer, and Adelman finish the work is for. So yeah, it makes sense though. This is another one that yeah. took a while, I think. Yeah. And that was when the flood approaches. So what was the flood? Uh, flood is an enlightenment. So uh, that's the that's Thomas's theme for the puzzle was flood. Um, yeah. Flood, enlightenment. Yeah. Chart the stars. Find the spear. Thanks, certified nobody. For the five bones. Wow. So okay. So right now, you know, this is, a, you know, for the most part, it doesn't really seem like it's too out of the ordinary. 
But then this is when you get, yeah. you got crazy with the cicada.pdf because I remember that's when the when you came up yeah, with something that's different. Yeah, modular lattice key, and they actually so I I didn't do anything with it, but somebody took the idea of the modular lattice key and they made modular lattice key encryption. Uh, there's a white paper out for it now, but it actually exists in a like in an actual form now. So. So the thing that you were do- the thing that you were talking about in that paper actually came out. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Huh. Oh. So I'm guessing you're the same guy that did the purpose is not to spread a plague but to deliver a fire. Yeah, and then you could see in the background that's the beginning from when I started going into DNA. Um. Because that's that's actually a double helix in the background. Oh, I don't think anybody picked up on that. Although the information super highway, and then you had inf- misinformation. Yeah, this whole thing yeah. was just like this is just barely the first part of everything that came out, and then that's when we actually got to the MLK stuff, which is crazy that somebody actually put this together and made it work. Yeah. Just for encryption, I guess, you know. Do you even know who the guy is? Uh, there were three developers. There's a white paper. I don't remember their name, but you could just look up Modular Lattice uh, Encryption. I'll have to do that. Yes, I will do that. Let's see if we can find Introduction to modular lattice encryption. Damien Shield. That, that's lattice based. Look up modular lattice. Uh, lattice based cryptography. Either. Oh, modular lattice signatures revisited. That's it. The fourth, yeah. Oh, wow, there it is. It's like a real thing. You're, yeah. You're you're like a real smart guy. <laughs> it's like you spend all your time in college or something like that. It's so weird. Yeah, super weird. Yeah, just like hanging out with all the young babes and stuff. I remember when I was in college. I didn't want to leave either. Yeah. <clears throat> I was having too much fun. Drinking the beers. <laughs> smoking the weed. Wow. I don't understand. They keep giving me... Uh, scholarships. They keep giving you scholarships, so you just keep going and learning shit. So you don't work yeah. for the you, you ain't working for the government or anything like that. Oh yeah. no, I'm a CIA show. Haven't you seen Twitter? You're oh you so you do work for the CIA? Ah, you son of a bitch, <laughs> dude. I'm like trying to understand this while I'm scrolling through it, and I don't get any of this stuff. So that's good. Well, that's good. You so you actually. Yeah actually seen some success coming out of a lot of the stuff that was postulated out of this which is really interesting i feel like a lot of yep. people really missed a lot of this stuff and for what reason i don't know i guess now that all the videos and shit are gone it's just hard for anybody to even contextualize what was going on during that time yeah and the um the dna encryption it was a. Uh... Modified, but it's it's being used for post quantum cryptography. Some of the algorithms that are used, so very very interesting. So what yeah. happened in June, man? So you and Thomas were like, what decided that you were going to get even crazier? Did it really have something to do with this birthday? What's going on here? Uh, I don't exactly remember what happened in June. Oh. No, that's that's just when I kind of took over, and Thomas started emailing me, hey, update me with the puzzle, what's going on? <laughs> so this was almost all me. So you just put yeah, this was all everything, everything together over here? Because, I mean, this is just... Yeah, they gave me the login for the FTP, and I went crazy. Because <laughs> it was songs and shit, but I remember there was a bunch of like stuff to find. Where did you get all of the data point, or where did you find all these places? That was uh, one of the few things Thomas requested of me at this point, was to put those geo-coordinates in. 
Wait, oh, so, so Thomas actually was the one that came up with these zero coordinates, but... Mm -hmm. I wonder if there was actually stuff in all these places, because, I mean, there wasn't anything at the church that I went to. Yeah, I'm not sure. That was the weird thing, and that's what, like, gets me back to say, or, I wonder if any of the places that they're talking about in that Cicada NFT puzzle, if they have anything to do with any of these places, because a couple of them nobody ever went to. They probably do. I'd assume so. I guess we'll just have to wonder. I guess that's going to be one of those Thomas things that we just can never get a straight answer out of the fucker form. Yeah. He's going to be like, give me 50 bucks and maybe I'll tell you. <laughs> Sorry, Thomas. I'm just making yeah, you fat fuck. Wouldn't miss this shit for the world. Anyways. Well, that's fun. So you put all this shit together. You were the one that was doing all the trials and tribulations. How come you didn't go to freaking DEF CON, dude? That was the place to be. I was be. busy with this. You were busy making all this shit? Dude, DEF CON was after all this shit. You made all this shit, and then DEF CON yeah. happened. Yeah. So, like, this is just you sitting in your house making on your, what do you got, a laptop? You got a desktop? You got a Mac? What are you? Uh, desktop. So you're on a desktop. So how many screens? Four, three, one, one, one. Yeah. Is it like a TV? No. What I do for a lot of the puzzles is, that I, is I write the concept down on a piece of paper and then I actually make it. But oh, you're one of those weird motherfuckers by that hand. uses paper. You do things by hand. Yeah. That's yeah. That's I use insane. paper for most of it. That's weird. So you actually have like pieces of paper with like long ass mathematical equations written out on them, like a nerd and shit. Yep. That's very interesting. Very interesting. Well, I guess this is this has been kind of strange because I figured that there would probably be more coming out of this because even with the DEF CON shit, like you guys put DEF CON into the puzzle, I believe, because I was like, hey, Thomas, is there anybody going? You guys know anybody at DEF CON? Yeah. And then later on, like a couple days later, there was some like DEF CON shit up on the, you know, website, whatnot. Did you make that video? I did make that video. <gasps> you did. So, oh, somebody in the chat wants to know. So, was a government agency involved with the release of this puzzle? No. Uh, WikiLeaks was, but that's it. As Wait, far as whoa, I whoa, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean WikiLeaks was involved? How was WikiLeaks involved? Oh, that, that's where we started the Vault 7 puzzle. It was already out by the time Vault 7 came out, and then put out the sonic screwdriver and things like that but yeah but uh, how that, that was you from know? a certain pr person trevor i mean trevor fitzgibbons yeah. we don't we don't not mention people's names around here unless we're legally required not to all right but yeah it was just like so oh so you're saying that it was fucking trevor so you're actually saying that trevor got that information because there's no way yeah. that fucking Thomas was emailing back and forth with Julian Assange. I would have fucking seen those emails by now. Yeah, no. I would have gotten BCC'd on something because he can't help himself. Yeah. Mm, well, that's a pretty interesting one. Thanks a lot for that, Richard. Now we're all going to jail. Congratulations. Well, be there with the, the white hair, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's all right. I'll be able to get us out. I just turned into a 55 foot tall robot. We'll be fine. Easy. Yeah, I can only do that like once or twice, though. I can't keep pulling that trick. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. See, it was making me sad because when I went to DEF CON, like I was actually kind of hoping that I was going to meet more people, you know, related to Cicada. But when I got there, like, you know, this is when I started doing my shit. Right. Like, because a lot of people yeah. have asked you, I mean, I've seen you put out your little like tweet threads out here or whatever, where you're talking about. I ain't got nothing to do with no, no QAnon, motherfuckers. 
I ain't got nothing to do with that shit. It wasn't me. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause there really wasn't. Like, I don't think that there was any connection with you guys. Like, if anything, it was almost like me trying to like do my own thing. But like I didn't really have a lot of conversations with you. I didn't really know what you were about. I know that like I had talked to you and then some of the other guys that are like inner. You know, he died last time I checked. Poor guy. Yeah. Lost his like fucking leg and Mm. horrible horrible but like i remember back then it was like this was just a simple trace in time and then all of a sudden people were saying that you know julian assange is involved nobody could really like understand anything and then at the same time we ha- were having all those fights with the the guys from the wiki Right. And yeah. some of the stuff that Thomas was saying was making sense. Like, yeah, uh, we were involved back then, but, you know, those guys were toxic as fuck. And we just decided that, you know, we were going to do something. And then eventually just we gave up on them completely. You stopped using the key and then, you know, moved on. That's what Thomas tried to make it seem like. And then he said that basically it became a battle between them and the wiki people, you know, the guys that were in that great big story thing or whatever, because, you know, I met all of them. I got to meet them. It wasn't a pleasant experience for me because they were like recording me and shit without my permission. And, you know, like if I would have known that they were going to pull that shit, I would have just recorded that the whole conversation had my phone on live stream like I always planned. But, you know, like they already threatened me to kick me out. For, you know, having my phone out and shit. So I think that that's just yeah. a, strange thing so if, like you ever had any interactions with Knox, box or any of these motherfuckers from yeah. the other camp like are you good friends with them not friends with them what's up not really friends uh well not at all friends the person i was closest to was brother box actually but good old martin yeah fucking Knox. yeah boxing the box and Knox. wait i want to find this I know he's in here so. because like I met all of them like he's you know funny. they're yeah. they were all very interesting people like I just kind of was like oh hey wait a minute they're like they all surrounded me and you know obviously the only one that I'm gonna recognize is gonna be Marcus right I don't recognize any of these other fucks because none of them have ever you know shown their fucking face right like so how am I supposed yeah. to fucking know who these people are right well yeah, no- Knox is there with Marcus, and I mean, I think both of them are transitioning their genders now, so. Yeah, they're both transitioning. Yeah, so they they don't look the same. As as far as I understand, yeah, they don't look the same. Like, when I met Marcus, like, it, it, I met him this day, so, like, this is the day that I met them. Yeah. Um, in this great big story thing, and, uh. When I saw him, like, he was legit. He was wearing a fucking dress. Like, he's yep. wearing a dress under the shirt. Like, he was wearing a full-on yeah. dress with, like, heels and shit. And then he had a sh- that t-shirt on with the hoodie and shit. So it was just, like, and with that full fucking beard, it was just a weird thing. Because I was just, like, is that fucking, I was, like, Marcus Winners? Is that you? And he was just, like, oh, my God, you're shorter than, he was, like, you're shorter and fatter than I thought. I was like, how could you say that? I've always been straight up that I'm a short, fat man. Short and fat. But no, it was very interesting, like, meeting them because they actually did give me some pretty good information about what was going on. Because, like, I didn't know who Thomas, I didn't know Thomas's real name at that point, but they were the ones that educated me as to their side of things. So it was a really weird situation where I talked to, Thomas about whole his side of things and you know what his whole bullshit was and then I got those guys to basically give me their side of the things and it did give me some understanding of what was happening like they did confirm that they knew who Thomas was like 2013 20 or 2012 2013 time they said that he had been around for a really long time so to me it almost seemed like you know there was something bigger that was going on like they ended up getting in and figuring out who was behind it but you know to not make the story weird for them and, you know, kind of make them look stupid for even trying. They decided to go a different way. That's what I always thought, you know, just from the outside looking in. Cause I didn't spend a shitload of time in their IRC. I remember showing up a couple of times and then me just being all like, yeah, this is probably not the place for me because that's just kind of how I felt, you know, saw whatever. Yeah. 
So, like, for me, it was a pretty big time. Like, the whole DEF CON thing was big because, like, the puzzle that was out, it was just supposed to be a QR code with the cicada on it that Thomas told me to go hang up one somewhere in DEF CON. And I was just like, yeah, okay, I'll do that. And then I ended up calling some, like, printing place, having them print out a whole, you know, ream of paper worth. And then I just stuffed it in my backpack. And then I just was walking around DEF CON, you know, with the stack of these QR codes. And I was just walking by people and I'd just be like, do you like puzzles? And then I would hand it to them and then they would look at it and then they'd be like, what the fuck? And then I just, you know, keep walking or whatever, you know, just be really weird about it. And I'd have people chasing me down, asking me, be like, hey, is this like, are you fucking Cicada? And I'd be like, nah, I just got hired by them. Pass this out and shit. You know, just like, you know, I was playing around because at that point I figured, you know, like we were trying to do the ARG thing and I was trying to I was trying to do something fun while I was there. Right. And yeah. ultimately, there was a meeting that we did actually set up. You know, I, I talk about it when I'm talking about, you know, hey, this is what the where QAnon actually got its birth from. And, you know, a lot of people don't understand is that you don't you didn't have any connection to it. You didn't know what the fuck was going on. You guys might have put Q in the puzzle or whatever. And the only purpose that that served, I think, in the puzzle was I could never figure it out because it just kind of seemed out of place. Like it didn't seem. Yeah. It, it didn't seem very connected. It seemed like it was like it seemed like somebody was putting something up and then they were going to later come on back and like add something to it. It just never happened. Yeah. By the time Q came out, I, I had taken over and then it was one of those requests Thomas had, but it didn't really fit with what i was doing and i guess by october 2017 um i started encrypting things like uh, I'd, I'd normally encrypted things and with my own kind of uh signature styles um same kind of things that you saw in 2013 cicada yeah that makes sense harpocrates yeah, that would be it. Would be Harpocrates is about the time. Yeah, it was well. That's August. Like you started doing that in August, right? And that's when yeah, everything got weird. August. That's when everything got yeah. weird, right? Because like I had when I had found out that Thomas was basically lied to me, right? Like I, he was like he lied to me about who he was. Most of his story didn't seem to match up, but key portions of it that place him in there at 2013 at least and definitely 2014 and you know like this is all stuff that i knew because like i went to his house after that when he was living with linda and then there was a situation where linda was like she was like crazy like yelling and screaming at him yelling and screaming at me thinking like like i'm a member of his like i don't even know but you know, it was all over her computer because apparently Thomas or somebody deleted all of the pictures and shit off of it. So, uh, you know, I'm good at that shit. I can I got a USB drive that I carry around with me with, you know, recovery software on it. And I just recovered, you know, whatever I could. And I recovered all kinds of fucking stuff from 2014, like materials that would have been utilized to assemble the Libra Primus. And I just, you know, like there was yeah. little bits and pieces of it all over the place, like the little clip arts, all the little like side pieces, the goddamn, you know, uh, star thing. And then that's when I was like, wait, hold, what the fuck? You know, like, how is all this yeah. on here? You know, and I was like, but is it like, did he make the initial one and then, you know, like create the second half? Like, but I didn't have enough time to figure it all out because I just wasn't there long enough. And I never got to go back to Linda and like have another conversation with her. Like I tried going back one time and we talked about Thomas and stuff for a little bit. And, you know, I was trying to figure out where he was and, you know, she just didn't, she didn't know. She was just like, he's fucking gone. His shit's still fucking here. He needs to come get it. You tell your fucking friend. And I'm like, he ain't my fucking friend, bitch. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So it was a bad time, you know, like I feel bad in some ways because you just said some weird shit. You said 2013 and I'm like, wait, what do you mean 2013? That must mean that you're talking about, hold on. I actually can use something for this. Cause I went through somebody's particular, oh, not this one, this, not this one. This one it was 2013's puzzle when it when they dropped yep. the iso and everything else this is what you're talking about because that's when the instar emergence came out which i just 
put up. Yeah, but. and Thomas did compose and Star Emergence. He composed Interconnectedness. See, that's what I was trying to say, is that in the 2013 puzzle, you there's a book code that's in this 2013 puzzle, and it says right here, Welcome yep, again, here's Liberal, the book code. Our legacy. Yeah, so like those guys from the other thing, I'm gonna go pull. I gotta pull up that other image because I don't have it. Should have had it on command. But yeah, you posted something up the other day that I was like, "What the fuck? Are you kidding me?" Yeah. And this is something that you know, like I've sent over to some other people. Like I've trolled the Marcus and those guys with it. They just don't even want to say anything because I was just like, "You guys know that." I'm going to eventually yeah, get this shit out there. You know, you guys can lie and say that it's not them or whatever all you want. But at the end of the day, you know, like it was them. They were the ones that put this shit together and they have, you know, proof beyond a PGP key that can prove that they did it. And I've just never heard anything from them. Well, we still, we, well, I shouldn't say we, but I, I emailed and got the 2017 PGP message signed. So, uh, <laughs> but Libra Primus isn't solved. So, if people want to solve Cicada, there there should be a distinction there because 2014's unsolved. That's correct. Um, 2014's unsolved. So, Seventh Exposed was more uh, about delving into history and those kinds of things, and just that uh, having a good time making fun of the government. Yeah, here's the email in question. Yeah. Here's the book. And code. this was March 30th of 2012. The, <laughs> yeah, it was during the alpha of Proton Mill, which we were invited to. So. And that to me was like one of the really weird things because I was like, wait, wait a minute. So you guys were trying to say that you're behind 2014 or the 2017 stuff. And that's where people were like, it's sevens exposed. I mean, sure, I guess you could say it's a Cicada 3301 production because people that were involved in creating the Cicada 3301 puzzle are also making that one. And then now we have... Yeah, but it actual... wasn't Cicada. Yeah, it wasn't Cicada. Fully. Yeah. It was something different. And that's where I think a lot of people really just got angry, which is fine. You know, like, the encrypted book, the original Cicada puzzle is been solved. It's just that we have more evidence now than ever that says that at least most of the stories that certain people were saying, you know, now we know who's being legit and who's not being legit. And we know that, I mean, what can we really say? Can you really consider yourself cicada? Can any, I? Yeah, you, I guess this kind of means that you can, right? Mm, I, I guess I can, but the way that I see it, it's not a, person or conglomeration it's a collective and way to express uh cryptography and spread awareness of privacy because nobody's gonna go in their free time and look up end-to-end -end encryption uh open source softwares uh it's something most people don't do but if you stick a puzzle behind it more people will and that was the overall goal so yeah that's what it really makes sense to i mean that's why I was yeah. really interested in it, but that's why at the same time I wanted to go into it because I figured that I would eventually discover, you know, at least some good information because, like, I'm not coming out here with, like, a wrong... I don't feel like I'm using the wrong tactic. I didn't think I was using the wrong tactic, being like, I'm going to figure out who's behind Cicada. I'm going to end this mystery and be the greatest detective ever, but there's no way for me to actually ever be able to do that. It was just always a fucking pipe dream. But... Yeah. What I did know is that I was going to at least get enough information to, you know, at least solidify that, you know, hey, we knew that what I was doing was the actual Cicada 3301 puzzles. It was something different, you know, something yeah. different made by different people. But, you know, maybe one of the guys was involved with the other puzzles and stuff, and he's got evidence that directly associates him to be you know, like, hey, can you sign this for me, please? Thanks. You yeah, know. and, and then I mean, Thomas was involved, too. He's still composed in Star Emergence, Interconnectedness. Um, and, and these are both songs that are literally, or this one right here, the In Star Emergence, like on this particular YouTube video from Bits and Bytes, who's in the chat, um, that guy, he 
posted it up here on his video. He doesn't have the copyright thing, but like if I play it or whatever, it will show up afterwards or whatever. But like somebody does have claims to the song, the whole thing. Although Babyfist yeah. is trying to say that, oh, are you sure Libra Primus isn't solved? Don't fucking start. Don't fucking start, uh, Babyfist. From what I heard, it's not. I, I wasn't involved 2014, so I, I wouldn't know exactly, but. But yeah, I don't think that puzzle was solved yet. No, I think it's going to take a I think it's going to take a lot longer for people to go through. Like there was one time that Thomas sent me something for a puzzle that he wanted me to use. And it was like a substitution cipher. But it was like. Two, you had to add two two letter you had to add two together in order to equal one something like that i can't remember exactly the way that it was put together oh, it was probably uh n plus two uh n plus four so it's the the equation for nth prime um you could get prime number up to infinity uh by using the equation so no it was no equation he actually literally had like a key where it was like these two letters equal this. These two letters equal this. And it was very similar oh, yeah, to yeah. how it was very similar to how some of the pages in 2014 were solved. Like it was very similar. And he was trying to say that it was like, you know, you just need this to finish up some of the other ones or whatever. But nobody actually ever tried to it because, you know, it's fucking Thomas and yeah. It's so hard yeah. to it's so hard to know what he's being truthful anymore, which is the sad thing is that, you know, I wanted to really like the dude because I really enjoyed the situation. I mean, sure, my life has been shit for a while, but, you know, I pulled myself out of, I guess, the ashes. But <laughs> to me, it's been really weird trying to figure out, you know, what it all means, because like I at first I thought this was going to be like some great shit where I was going to get like a cool job and, you know, like get get some fucking respect finally. But that's not yeah. what happened. You know, that's not what happened. And it was stupid of me to think about that, right? It was stupid of me to think about that. No, I, I didn't get any respect or a job or anything either. Exactly. That's what I was saying. I'm just like, but you're not getting respect. I mean, you're getting scholarships and stuff. And, you know, whenever you're just hanging out in your school shit, you're doing with that. But here's what it is. Oh, we have another super chat. Cicada 3301 was built for the Zodiac. The Zodiac is well aware of all her doings. We are, we're not. She thought the entire world knew who she was. What the fuck? You know, something interesting. If you look at... Speaking of Zodiac, sorry, I'm going kind of off on a tangent, but it's fine. You can when I was it. looking through Thomas's blog post, he, he had posts in there about the Zodiac killer. Oh, yeah. And certain oh, things yeah. that he, he had me encrypt. Um, I don't have my email in front of me, so I can't show you or anything, but it was very similar to the solution for the Zodiac. Uh, like the, the Zodiac Before ciphers. Team? Yeah. So I just thought it was weird like like Thomas knew the solution to the Zodiac killer ciphers. I don't know. Yeah, he was trying to for a long time he was trying to get me to say that one of his guys these guys that he didn't like was the Zodiac killer, but he also had a lot of information on that. But somebody actually came out and solved that thing. Yeah. Recently and when I was looking at the solutions, it was almost verbatim to what he had me encrypt, so yeah, I don't know. You know, I've always looked at it as like Thomas was the Zodiac killer. That's the way that I saw it. And I really haven't talked about this a lot. But when I was out there, you know, like Thomas was always trying to connect himself to like that case. Like he was always talking about it. He was always like going back over it. That was one of the things that he was like trying to push me to like look into more and i was just kind of laughing because i was just like okay because on one end he was looking into the zodiac and he says that he was like actually dating a girl that got killed by the motherfucker and shit and he says that he's been going back and forth with the zodiac for a long time like it's a really funny i mean if it's real yeah. it's a fucking great story but it's fucking thomas so you know you gotta take it with the green yeah i don't know green ass you know what i'm saying so, like, he grew up where it yeah. happened, and then he was also trying to say that his friend, Steve LaFlair, was, like, a Satanist, and that he was the Golden State Killer, and all this shit. And I'll be honest, I'll be honest, when I was researching the Golden State Killer, he made me 
or he had me upload a video or whatever. And I did because I figured it was bullshit anyway, but it would be funny later on to go back at it with it and make fun of him. And actually the craziest fucking thing. So the guy that got arrested for being the Golden State Killer and charged for a couple of the murders, not all of them. He only got charged for some of them. So it's implied that he probably did the other ones, but they don't have enough proof for it. Even though, if you look back at the evidence, it definitely seems like there was more than one person involved. And it just so happened that this guy, LaFleur, seems to have, like, lived, if not in the same place as this guy, but, like, had been next to him in a various ways. And then he also, like, lived around the same area. So he, he was always trying to say that there was some crazy death cult shit going on out there. Weird. Really, really weird. Really weird. That was the that was always the really weird stuff for it. You know how he was always trying to like keep himself away or out of sight. But you know, like after learning more and more and more, like I heard, I was probably one of the first people to hear about him losing four hundred thousand dollars at a casino. But it's such a fucking crazy story that there's no way that you could just hear that and believe it, especially if the lady that's telling it to you is screaming at the top of her lungs and she's crazy as fuck. Her name's Linda, by the way, and. You know, later on, you know, she finally showed me like actual paperwork. And at that point, I was like, OK, this is even weirder because I was like, OK, I was thinking that I was going to be. I thought I was going to be in one way. This is going to be this. And my life got up, overturned, upturned. And yeah. I think it's crazy. So the Q thing wasn't even supposed to be nuts. Right. And oh, tree chaps out here. Yeah. Zodiac cy- name cipher says Mary kiss my name. What? Mary, kiss Mary my K name. is my name. Mary K is my name. Mary K? Is that what it was? Yeah. I don't remember that shit. Are we, Another are we, thing. Are we sure that this is well, the same shit? While we're going on about Leffler. Yeah, Leffler was around there a lot. Like, how much did he push you to go after Leffler? Uh, not that much, but what I did find weird is uh, Johnny Thundercock, or whatever his name was, from uh, Ann Murdoch's Twitter, who was stalking him and got him paranoid to the point where he probably killed himself, but... Uh, well, that is Thomas's M.O. He was saying that was Leffler... And I don't remember exactly what it was, but I was scrolling through that Twitter and then there was some kind of evidence that pointed to it was Leffler, which I thought it was strange, but yeah. Maybe a copycat. Maybe a copycat. What about Ian Murdoch? Uh, I never knew him. So you never knew him, huh? No. Never talked to him, never said anything to him. That's crazy. So I guess what have we established so far? So this is new information. This 2013 shit. I don't think anybody knows any about that. Yeah, so my my, uh, parts were to make the book cipher, link it to the Twitter account, go to the first onion. And then I was living in Portland, Oregon at the time. So I put up the QR code to the second onion and that was a... That was where my 2013 uh, contributions just kind of ended. It was right there, so. And then you came back, and you were the one fucking guy that could, or I guess you and Thomas together doing this really gave them, could give you guys enough credence to at least make it seem like that. Because let's be real, y'all were using cicada imagery and shit like that. You yeah. know, with Seven is Exposed or whatever, but... I mean, that's what I think a lot of people were just like, oh, no, fake puzzle. Rah. But at the same yeah. time, it's like, you know, you could just email somebody and be like, hey, can you guys put out a PGP key? Thanks. Or can you go put out a side message that says some funny shit that pisses people off? Yeah, and that's what we did. And it's like we I remember telling people that I was like, yeah, it's supposed to be like a cicada 3301 thing, but it's not them directly. Because they're too busy. Yeah. 
their other puzzle is over. It's not coming out again. This is the next thing. You know, so either get on to the next thing or solve the old thing. And that's the way that I looked at it because I was trying to be a bridge at least to like help layman people and people that weren't having all the time that I had to just bullshit to actually figure this stuff out because I mean, it's kind of, it's been kind of a big mystery, right? Like a lot of people have really really wanted to know, but the only where the only real place that's left is just to finish the book. It's just that I don't could you do you see anybody being able to do it? Uh, solvers we have now? No. Well, that's not true. I think Tech might be able to. Yeah, that te that Tech kid might be able to. He was pretty fucking smart. Yeah, or Highway. <laughs> oh, yeah, Highway was pretty smart, too. Yeah. We're all smart. But as far as the OG Wikia crew, probably not. They're, uh, they're too didactic. They don't think abstractly. And it's weird because you think that they would because of the their weirdness. Uh, I guess, yeah, their far left kind of ideologies. Well, there um, were social justice warriors from something awful. Like that's the thing. There were goons back in the day, and I bet you anything. I can almost guarantee you they were running around. Maybe not Marcus himself, but the other fuckers. Fucks. Yeah, but I don't know. You you think with with. Those kind of political ideologies, it usually lends to more, like, abstract thinking. But they're totally not like that. No, no, they're really not. Like, I was trying to help them back then, and, you know, even, like, try to build a bridge when I was talking to them, saying, hey, you know, I'm willing to, you know, do this. I'm just, you know, running my own thing here. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this mystery. And to me, like... They were really mean to me, like, oh, we just know that you're getting paid to do this. And like, they just had this completely, like, wrong understanding of what was going on. And I think that a couple of them realized that, like, that Brother Box guy, I think he finally started spending a little bit of time watching my show and realized that, you know, I'm not the guy that they thought that I was. It's actually a whole lot worse, right? You know, it's worse, yeah. but in a different way. And that's right there. I don't yeah. think that they could, I don't think that they ever understood it. So it's like, and you know, when I was at DEF CON, like I came up with my own shit, although I was thinking about this from a while back because it was that Q thing, you know, got me going and thinking, right? And I always looked cool. at it as a way to catch up Thomas, but also really find a bunch of people that I could use. That would help me. I can't say that I could use, but, you know, that could help me in this yeah. particular area. So, like, I use the Cicada cred, right? Like, that's why I took the took my own portion of the puzzle and did my own thing. And I was just like, yeah, if you guys want to help me out with something, you want to learn more, come here. And I picked a spot, went to a place, and I was just like, yes, this is what I want to do. It's going to be like you. This is what's supposed to be happening. We're going to be posting on 4chan some bullshit information. It's supposed to be fun because we want to, like, do something that gets kind of popular, and then we want to give it up to somebody else. And I was like, but the whole idea is that, you know, we're faking all of this because we're creating a fake social movement, right? And we want to see how far and deep and why this social movement can go. And then we want to make sure that we have people watching it from both sides because we wanted to make yeah. sure that I wanted to make sure that I had people on both sides fighting for it. So like the Travis views, the Mark, Mike Rothschilds of the world. I wanted all of those kinds of people to be against this thing because I knew that eventually they were going to come after it. And once they did, it would be like the one thing that they would always be trying to make money off of. Because I understand, like, how people are making money. I saw how if we started putting out these simple disinformations that were very similar to some of the other stuff that Thomas was putting out there, right? Like, he, outside of the Cicada operations, was doing shit. That's the thing that I think a lot of people don't get. It's like Cicada, he, Thomas was using Cicada to recruit people. That's how he recruited Lestat. Yeah. That's how he recruited every other fucking head that he got. Oh, I make music for Cicada, and these are the puzzles. And then he would invite them to be Cicada, but they wouldn't really be Cicada. They would be another one of his like little people, 
right? Like his people and his own little group, his brood, I guess you could say, as it were. Yeah. And this is what I was trying to catch up because I didn't talk to you about this. I didn't talk to Lestat about this. I just did it on my own. And I was like, well, let's just see how far I can get. Let's see how big of some names I can get. And let's see where this thing can go. And I didn't get approached by very many people. I only got approached by some guys from MAGA 3X. We walked around, you know, we talked, it was whatever. And ultimately, it was only one guy from that, like, group that said, hey, I think your idea is really good. I think that we could get it done. You mind if I, you know, hit you up in, like, a couple of weeks and then give you some operators to help you get this done? And that's when I got, you know, introduced to these other motherfuckers that basically helped me get it done because I was aware that I wasn't going to be able to do this on my own. I was like, but it'd be yeah, a lot like easier. Pozo the Pozo, right? Yeah, right. So I needed to get Pozo. I needed to get guys like Pozo. I think I named him by name, actually. And he just managed, he just happened to be there because he was like, yo, what the fuck are you naming me by name right now? I'm sitting right. I was just like, oh, I didn't even notice you were in here. My bad. Uh, that guy, you know, and I was like, we could do this, right? Like, it could be a really interesting operation where we can show not only is the media so fucking backwards that they can't even report on the simplest things as being true or false. I was like, we could create a piece of disinformation that they're going to make disinformation about. And I was like, and once that yes. happens, I was like, they're going to get put into a position where everything that they're putting out is going to be like that. And that's what we saw is because we spent years and years and years with this whole Russiagate bullshit, right? And everybody knows it was fake. Anybody with the fucking brain knew it was fake, but all these other people kept on pushing it. And it's the same type of ideology that went into making this Q thing uh, a reality. But, you know, I knew it wasn't going to take me doing it because that's not my skills. I said, hey, I need some other people. And I was like, and then at the part of time when we're supposed to switch hands or whatever, I was like, this is when it's going to get really weird. Because not only was I, I think that the guys that started it, you know, the guys who were actually posting, they got savvy to what I was up to. Like they figured it out because I didn't tell them everything. I only told them what I wanted them to know. And they had no idea that Cicada or Thomas or any of these other people were going to be involved. Because, you know, I didn't go to Thomas until much later and said, hey, you ever heard of this Q thing? And, you know, didn't say anything else. And then later on, this guy's trying to tell me that he's like started it and shit. So it was another situation where I was just kind of like, well, I know all of the cicada isn't like this. And I was like, but this is something even weirder. This is something much more different. So I just yeah. kept myself away from it. I wanted to have plausible deniability from the original amounts of posts because I didn't want people to be able to say that I was just up there posting. Although I did make mistakes. So like I accidentally at least three or four times showed the trip code. And, you know, when I went to fucking 4chan, just like opened it up to look something up. I kept forgetting that it would just stay there. Right. It just stays on the autofill on the fucking page. So I just kind of move forward because like it wasn't my job to be posting it was just my job to understand what the key was so later on i could kind of fuck with people and be like here's the key but don't say anything to anybody because this isn't for you right this isn't for us like everybody that was watching the show was supposed to be in the know and then we were going to basically start interviewing and talking to all these cute people and then seeing how all these other sided people were so we could give people an actual understanding of how disinformation grows in real time and the way that the interconnection goes between these different groups. You know what I'm saying? Like the, yeah. the groups for it and against it. And that's what we've been seeing so far. We've gotten so much good data out of like what's happened and it's not like it was a cicada operation. It was just me and other people that were interested in the cicada ideology and the things that were going on that were applying. Yeah. So it's like you do it was something the same marketing method. Yeah, we use we we stole from you. Yeah, but it's not really. I don't see it as stealing. It's more like an homage because each individual piece seems to build itself up but you know there was certain things that were really great about cicada that i wanted to implement into this but then there were other things about it that i couldn't like that's because that's why you were never asked to be a part of it because i can't be encrypting things for these people like we're giving people the simplest words ever sometimes just one word right and they're supposed to like 
figure out what we're talking about off of that one word. If I start encrypting it and doing all this other shit, it's just going to become so untenable for any regular mind that they're just literally going to look at it and their eyes are going to gloss over. So the idea was the simplicity and everything else was there. And to me, it was crazy, like watching what Thomas was doing at that time, because I know that you were getting emails from Thomas. Hey, put this in the puzzle. Hey, do this in the puzzle. Like I figured it out that at least there was, there was a method. Thomas wasn't doing all this stuff himself. He had somebody else that was, you know, doing all of the legwork. And then he was just kind of like, yeah, cicada. Yeah. And then it was good timing for Q2 because we had quarantine right after that. So nobody had anything better to do. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, well, the thing is, is like Q was done. Like I, I we tried to kill it in 2018, which was the plan kill that was the first planned kill and that's what i thought it was going to go down but the 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 sheer i never even understood that the the sheer stupidity of humanity and like just the lengths that some of these q-tards went to try to debunk shit and then when when the actual when some of the actual news organizations believed it and then some of the shittier news organizations didn't believe it it was it became an untenable situation because I realized by 2019. Go ahead. Well, it did drop off in 2018, and then uh, 2019, nobody had anything better to do after the end of the year. So. Yeah, well, I mean. It just kind of popped off. Yeah, it just kind of popped back up. It just, like, started going. But the thing is, it wasn't as organic as it was the first time. Like, sure, the first time. After November, all of a sudden bots and shit were jumping onto it, which is a normal thing with any fucking trending hashtag or anything else that's out there. It's a normal fucking thing. Yeah. Right? And they started pushing him. They started pushing it up. And they kept going with it. And honestly, it made me wonder, because by 2019, like almost the end of 2019, once I finally got in with the MAGA coalition and figured out if they were actually good or not good, but you know... Like, they were a target. Glenn was a target. Glenn doesn't understand that he was a target of mine. Like, it's funny. I'm not like the CIA, but apparently I think like the CIA or something like that. Because I was trying to figure out who these people were. I wanted to know who was behind the MAGA coalition and stuff like that. I wanted to dig into all these little things that people were telling me about. But the only way to do it is to get next to somebody and get connected to them and and find out a lot about folks and then you can see you know like i've done the same gag multiple times to multiple different people in the exact same way and it's because it's an operation right like at first when i was talking to glenn we were good you know i let glenn be as open as he could until he started to close off when he basically when he was not able to provide what he was able what he was saying he was able to provide he started to turtle in exactly as I figured. And that gave me a lot of understanding as to some of the people that he was working with and, you know, what his overall role in the situation was, because, you know, he kind of was like funding all these stupid fucking people and connected to all these shitheads and then running around and lying about shit. And it's almost like, you know, Glenn and Thomas are very similar in though their operation, you know, like they have that same, like leftist style of operation but at the same time they come at you with this overtly you know like i'm a fucking right winger but you know sometimes the stuff that i say doesn't really seem very right wing right like that's what the ideology that i was getting so like 2019 shit was done and then it was early 2020 it was like after the pandemic started after it wasn't before it was after the pandemic started and then all of a sudden the thing took off again like crazy and nobody could you know like it wasn't organic it was like it just came back out of nowhere started showing up on twitter and shit again it was like it just came back and it was not organic at all right it was not organic at all i just think that some people haven't been really burst on a lot of it but you know, this Q thing, you know, it has its birth in, like, the same thing that Cicada was, like, the same kind of idea. And it is kind of like an ARG in a lot of ways. I mean, think about it. These Cicada people be going to, or these QAnon people be going to rallies and shit, and they got, like, t-shirts and stuff. 
and they have their own yeah. like they have their own entire universe that they existed. It's like going to Disneyland for, you know, people that love Disney, right? Yep. It's no different than, you know, like how all these Antifa ideology people will like mass together and go do shit and be like, yeah, let's wreck the fucking place. Fuck the government. It's all the same thing. And that's, I think that's what a lot of people miss is what I was trying to illustrate. But, you know, I'm not like you. I don't got, I don't have a bunch of degrees and shit. I think I went to culinary school. No, I could cook you a good meal. Yeah. It's funny too, if you think about it, because between, you, me, uh, Thomas, and Lestat, we're all kind of on the opposite sides of the political compass. Oh, yeah, dude. Like, I don't even know what Lestat's fucking political compass is. I, I'd assume he's libertarian left. Yeah, I figured he was, like, libertarian left or something like that. Like, I used to be on the left, and then the left went way left, and now, apparently, I'm on the right, And even though I haven't really moved. Libertarian right... <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know if I'm really a libertarian anymore. Maybe. No, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I, I think I think Thomas is more authoritarian left. You'd be more authoritarian right. Yeah, I'd well, be a lib right, and well, that would be lib left. Yeah, that makes sense. That does make sense. Yeah. You know, each individual person, but you know, when you look at what Lestat did, you know, like he gets respect too because you know it's not like he was directly a part of the puzzles but he did make videos that you know obviously helped and i think that those videos were the w one thing that when i was able to play them on the show and shit like that it added it to it but you know it's not the videos i think themselves that were the thing that you know put it out there it was just the fact that we were able to actually get them out to a bigger audience utilizing the live stream thing that was the thing that i think Help because it, it, when before I had met the guys and understand who everybody was, you know, I was just like doing my thing, you know, like I don't know, I was trying to, I'm trying to help, you know. <laughs> and now, you yeah. know, I see how these things can operate. You know, they made that movie or whatever. I know I got hit up by some people in the movie, and I just was like, you can just have it. Yeah, like, you know, I was like, you can just take it. I was like, you guys could just take it. You know, there's nothing I can do about it. So, you know, do or do what you want. I was like, you know, just try to make it seem like the, you know, the shit. I'm like in that shit. And it kind of seems like, it. you know, the guy's personality is very similar to mine. You know, the face, the way he looks or whatever. I mean, sure, he's taller. And shit, but, you know, obviously there's nobody wants to sh watch a short fat guy running around on a movie. And you got Alan yeah. Richton next to him, all fucking big all buff blonde and stuff you know yeah some fucked up shit man you know to me it just seemed like but, uh, great but not great i don't know because because ghost said it was about him even though i literally never heard of the guy until esteban brought him yeah seriously ghost like i heard of him before esteban he's been I, around i had never heard of him you had never mm. heard of him? Yeah, like he was new, yeah. but he was doing a really good job of trying to make it seem like he was like OG. Yeah. So like he might have been like OG one of Thomas's friends. Like I'll give him that 100%. He was definitely OG Takeda. Takeda or a Fakeda. Yeah. That's what I was calling it for a while, Fakeda. So what's going to happen? You think in the future are we ever going to see anything coming from that Cicada 3301 situation again, or is it just waiting for the Primus? Uh, maybe. But, yeah, I think nothing's going to happen with actual Cicada 3301 until Libra Primus is solved. That makes a lot of sense. I'm excited to see if there's ever going to be any, like, else, you know, Sevens Exposed, that sort of shit. Like, I still think that if somebody were to do a new puzzle and follow the method right because like nowadays there's tons of args and i see them they're always getting posted up on reddit you know sometimes you can find shit on twitter and stuff like that but somebody really needs to capitalize on it i was working and talking with some people from meow wolf have you heard of that before yeah i i live right by meow wolf oh really have you been in there before yeah you know any of yeah. the people that work there uh, a couple times you know any people that work there? No. 
No, I just went in. But you live down. Place. You live down the street. You say, "I'm gonna probably uh, kind of down the street." I'm gonna send you to go talk to somebody over there because. All right. You know they do ARGs and stuff like you know like their whole thing is an yeah. experience. They have an experience that's in Las Vegas, and uh, they, they call it the Omega Mart. And it's like a real place yeah. that you can go into and it's got real products and stuff that you can buy, but it's also got something else going on there that you have to figure out. It's like you could go there, just visit the market where you could, you know, figure out the mystery and go through it. And I think that the stuff that you were doing, you know, that you were doing, you've been practicing doing that you can show that you're very good at doing um, that kind of stuff. I believe there's a new market for it. Like, you know, there's if you look since. 2017 when the that puzzle was going on escape rooms were barely on the scene right like people were starting to put them up and you know like talk about them but we didn't really see them and now they're fucking everywhere right and it's that same mentality so you know i challenge you you know you're you were talking about doing nfts and then you ended up selling s- stuff to this lady so she could do nfts but I would challenge you to say, like, hey, man, maybe it's not NFTs that we need to worry about. Maybe we should just think a little bit closer to home, you know, like a place like Mount Wolf and how you could apply this same style of cicada ideology, you know, the same methodology with the encryptions and how it's operating to do something even greater, you know, for business or something like that. That's where I think is the money's at. Cause you know, I made some decent money making some puzzles for people that people still haven't figured out that I made these puzzles. I mean, there was the one that everybody yeah. knew about, but there's been a couple other ones that I've been contacted by. I've made a puzzle for them, you know, giving them some encryption, giving them my ideas. And I've worked with a couple of NFT artists that have put out their NFTs and made millions and I ain't got shit. But you know, other than yeah. my like consultation fee or whatever, which is usually what I only get, but you gotta think about that. Like, think about putting it in, like Disneyland. Think Disneyland, or like a ride at yeah. Disneyland. Well, right? you've seen my uh, my tweets about Brood sixty seven, right? Yeah, that's like the sub project sixty seven Brood sixty seven shit. Or is yeah, that- so it's actually sixty seven different ARG creators. Uh, like one of them, the Chancellor Matthew from SVV is on there. Um, yeah, he, he's on the board, and then I have Parker uh, Wright, and then I have uh, a couple other people, like The Sun Vanished on Twitter. Um, you got Parker Wright and The Sun Vanished? You got that creepy fucker, Parker Wright? Is he really creepy in real life? Yeah. Do you think that he eats his no. fucking... Do you think he eats a corn dog with mayonnaise? Mm, probably, yeah, but... <laughs> just wondering. That just means you're weird. But, you're yeah, I've got... Fucking weird. 67 different pretty successful um arg creators uh oh tangry i got on there and you got tangry you got a yeah. fucking alien yeah dude did, did they send you their six figure thing or did you not get that uh i think i got it but i, I don't remember it yeah uh, after a couple of years most of tangry except like the the perfect squares or magic squares i don't remember anything yeah the perfect squares or magic squares that were really cool but then that one guy math easy solution came and shit on everything like an asshole yeah what a dipshit dude what an asshole (laughs) oh you have those guys from fucking oh yeah i see this is the the brood 67 thing yeah. I see. Well, you're going to have to get those guys together and do more cool shit. Or at least another yeah. ARG. I mean, the world needs a well done ARG, not no more of these like little bitch ones or whatever. I mean, remember, I talked to, remember, oh. I, do you ever talk to Jim Sewardson? Yeah. What'd you think of the guy? He's all right. Uh, I don't have any problem with them, uh, but we do disagree on a lot. I mean, I think the problem uh, with Jim Stewartson and even Lestat is is assuming that people are comped. <laughs> oh yeah, that's um, fun. 
And I mean, like I, I've been accused of of being paid, and you have too. And I'm pretty sure neither I of us paid. have seen a. I have a job. Neither of us have seen any. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's a fucking troll around on Twitter and. Yeah, I've never been paid to out. troll on Twitter or YouTube or any other place. No, but if anyone wants to pay me for it, I will. Yeah, dude, you could be like me and just do this shit for free. And then if people yeah. want to donate shit, that's up to them or whatever. I mean, today's <laughs> the first time I got some donations and like. I don't know, which is yeah. good, though, because I just got a new car. It was expensive, so I got to fucking pay for it. So help me out. Oh, uh, tree chap. Uh, so January 5th. Um, it was only really relevant for the first 2012 puzzle. Because, um, I mean, one plus five, six, and then uh, one plus two is three. And then you divide those by... Uh, by two, and then you get thirty-three oh one, and I, it was just the uh, that was that was the entire thing for January fifth for the first year. But yeah, I think that person is just crazy and trying to interject themselves into everything. They remind me of Frank Bacon and how he was just always, oh, this is something that I could write into my story. That's just me putting yeah. myself everywhere, but it's my story. What do you mean giving the autistic folks a chance? What do you mean I'm smart enough to solve this new puzzle? What new puzzle? There's a new puzzle? What new puzzle? Yeah, there's a new puzzle. I was talking about like somebody needs to like make a new puzzle, but I'm not going to solve it and shit because I plan to hopefully be a part of the group of people that are making it just so I could be yeah. all like, you know, hair, just like from my experience. That's it. You know, maybe not actually making the puzzle or getting any of the answers because I'm not going to solve it. I'm not going to sit there. I'm not going to do any of that shit. Fuck that. Nobody got time for that shit anymore. I got a Prius now. Drive that shit. Because I could have bought a Tesla. Well, I could have, but then I would have been s- super poor. Oh. Yeah, I don't think there was a puzzle that you mentioned. I don't think so. I haven't worked on a puzzle. There's just the old puzzles, you know, the the old Cicada 3301 puzzles and shit. My problem with the Libra Primus is that um, the wiki is garbage. Yeah. And those guys don't have a very good way of keeping together all of their bullshit. Like, I would have hoped they would have learned from me and started doing like a live stream where somebody was like fucking showing their fucking screen and like going through this stuff as people are talking about it. So people have an understanding, but that is just too fucking much to ask those guys. They're just too yeah. busy. They're too busy buying dresses or something. I don't know, which is fine. It's totally cool. You know, you should not wear red. Th- you should wear blue more your color. Just saying. I, I think in my inbox anyway, I have a, I have an email with the the plain text of Libra Primus, or at least what? most of it. What? Yeah, so it's been out there for like three years. Nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> oh, so wait, that shit that that Libra Primus text that was floating around a couple of years ago is actually probably what it was. Uh, yeah, most of it. Fuckers. But nobody knew how to solve it, so those other guys just kept working on it. That's so funny. You know, yeah. how come we how come we didn't get, you know, a great big story, man? You know, how come how come nobody gives a fuck about like us? It. Why don't they like us, bro? What is wrong with us? You're like a genius and stuff. You got all kinds of degrees and shit. They they don't even give a fuck no, about you. I'm I'm pretty sure uh what happened was uh, Marcus just kept linking his Rolling Stone article from years ago to to people for Great Big Story and bothered him every day until he got a until he got a video. He got his video. You know, Great Big Story. They shut their channel down too. Yeah, it's really sad. Too embarrassed. They're too embarrassed. Well, I don't think it was about the cicada thing. Yeah. 
thing. It was just because like nobody can get views on YouTube anymore. Yeah. Even if they are doing documentaries and shit, they're like, oh, it's not a short. We don't give a fuck about it. <laughs> yeah, if it's not fucking Mr. Beast, we don't give a fuck. Oh, it's not. You're not Mr. Beast and you're not putting up a 15 second short. Oh, we don't give no shits. And then there's yeah. guys that can upload like a minute long short. And I'm like, how come they can upload a minute long short? I can only upload 15 seconds. What is this? YouTube, are you trying to cut out long content like completely? Come on hate it hate it yeah i think it's just better to be under the radar well at least now some people know the the actual truth you know the reality of what's really going on and people should understand that you know you're not a bad guy you're not a bad person you had nothing to do with the QAnon shit you know you were just a puzzle guy doing puzzle shit yeah you're just vibing and jiving over here dude encrypting and shifting you know what I'm saying? Like, that yeah. was it. And then out of everything, you know, it's like, I don't understand why Lestat gives you guff. Why? Why would he do that? Why I don't he- know. I paid for his internet. I got him the deal with Cullen. I've I've tried bringing him into stuff. And yeah, he just. He's a dick, man. He's, he's like that. I don't get it, dude. It's like, I didn't even get to do- talk to Cullen. When soon as Cullen figured out who I was, he fucking blocked me. Like, he didn't even want to talk to me. And I'm just like, what the fuck, man? You did a whole documentary on Q&I? You ain't going to talk to me? I mean, you're not even going to put me in there for two seconds and be like, oh, this fucking douchebag says this, says that he came up with it and everybody says that he's an asshole. Goddamn white supremacists. Yeah. All right. Whatever. Do I have any crypto picks? Uh, Krill? Krill? Yeah. Fuck is krill. It's uh it's a AI trading coin. Uh so it automates you, you put krill into it and it's krill.io. Uh K R Y L L. Oh. Yeah, there you go. And yeah, it, it trades different coins uh other than krill, but you use krill as gas. Um but it, it's pretty good. It has good returns usually. Huh. Sounds like a scam. Oh, yeah. No, it, it's worked for me so far. How much crypto have you made so far? Thousands of dollars? Hundreds of thousands? Uh, Billions? Uh, tens of thousands from mining. Nice. But I don't, I don't buy and sell. Yeah, you should never buy and sell. I would mine. Although, you know, you're yeah. not going to be able to mine Ethereum very longer, and I don't have 32 Ethereum to put up for staking, so, yeah. Fuck Ethereum. And, um, I've been mining Ravencoin, and uh, I, I started when Bitcoin changed the uh, algorithm. I just started mining Bitcoin. Good. To Good. Taproot. Yeah. <laughs> what does this say? Uh, R O Hubris ninety nine ninety nine USD. What the fuck? Car money. You must have oh, blocked shit. me on your normal on my normal channel. How to use this old goofball channel? Oh well. Well, what's your fucking normal channel? Ooh, thank any you. Any thoughts on crow? Yeah. Any thoughts on crow? What's C R O? Well, thank you for the car no. money. I appreciate that. That's going straight to the car bill. I don't know what crow is. And and so I, I've seen a couple questions about NFTs anyway. So I'll just explain how the blockchain works. <laughs> yeah, explain it to the, um, to these idiots. No so offense. if if you guys have heard of a uh, endowment, uh, endowment is basically you you put money in and then you accrue interest off of uh, whatever your initial investment is. That's basically what mining is. But mining is setting up a computer to send complex mathematical problems, create transactional receipts, and then from those receipts you get a payout. Every time that you find a block, there's new coins to be found. Uh, And then every time you find a block or a share, you you hash. And a hash is a a one-way encryption. So once a hash happens, you can't go back to the, the... You can't decrypt it. And... NFTs are stored by links on um, virtual hard drives via these hashes. 
So it's essentially like hunting using every part of the animal, right? Uh, hashes are useless, and NFTs give a, a use to them. And an NFT is basically a, a notarized certificate of ownership for a piece of art. So uh, or it's saying anything that, else. Yeah, so it's saying like you you own this piece of art and it's, it's stored on the blockchain here. It's this hash and this is the link and it's stored on this hard drive. This global and hard drive. A, <laughs> right. And it's a non-fungible token, which means that it, it can't be bought or sold, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have an asset value. So people are buying NFTs and using them as leverage to reinvest. Uh and then from their leverage, they're they're able to get fungible tokens like Bitcoin that you could buy and sell. But that's pretty much how it works. I mean, you could sell an NFT. You could trade NFTs. Just sell yeah, you could trade it. You could sell track. it. But it's it's mostly used as leverage now. Yeah, that's what people are all doing with it now. It's like I was trying to do that with Crypto Kitties back in the day, but it didn't work out so well. But nowadays it's there. It's just that I think that people aren't using NFTs. They're only touching the surface of what it's actually for. And I feel like the ultimate issue with it moving forward is the fact that a majority stake of all NFT money is staked into the Ethereum blockchain. It's going to yeah. leave everyone with massive bags in the near future because, you know, like the Ethereum network is changing. It's moving to Ethereum 2.0 where it will be a staking coin like Omcoin. I just that's the first yeah. one that came to mind. Um, and at that point, you're going to need 32 Ethereum in order to stake so that you can even mine it. So, like, it's not going to be mineable anymore. Um, the, the the speed of the network is going to slow down because all of the people that are mining that are currently giving the network at speed are going to disappear. And then it's going to be left to only the people that are actually staking for 32 Ethereum to actually get these things done on the platform. And even more so, it seems like they're going to allow people to still leave stuff running and be utilized, but it's not like they're going to be making any money for it. So there's really no reason. So like, unless Ant miner ever releases the E3, yeah, maybe. Now, I don't even think so, man. Like, even then, even then, like, you're still yeah. going to need to stake your miner. Yeah, but it's still a ridiculous amount of hash rate that you get for the E3. It's a ridiculous amount of hash rate, but overall, like, most of the hash rate's going to go away. So even if they were to bring that out and put it back up, the network itself is still never going to be as powerful as it was at its yeah. prime. And then all those people trying to sell and buy and all that shit, it's going to be an issue. Be an issue. Platform name for NFTs. There's a lot of different platforms, but the the most trafficked one is OpenSea.io. OpenSea. The Open and C. The other ones that just like banned that one guy because he was a Nazi or something. Yeah. Yeah, look at that, dude. Top 10 collections. Look at this. 3,000 ETH? Jesus Christ, what is this yeah. guy selling? Selling fucking bulls, dude. Selling fucking bulls. Made 300 or 3,000 ETH. Man, I gotta go. I'm gonna go. Bull. I'm gonna pour some pictures of my balls and see what I get. <laughs> God damn. How is crypto not decentralized? <laughs> I had to give my private details. How's it private? It's private because your wallet ID is, um, Anonymous. Yeah, your wallet ID is anonymous unless you physically connect your name in some database outside of the blockchain that says, hey, this address belongs to this person. So like Coinbase, for example, that's what Coinbase is. You know, you can have your wallet hidden away on your computer or whatever, and nobody knows it's yours. But the second that you send that money to Coinbase, then Coinbase knows, hey, all right, here's your new address. Here's all the money you got, and here you go, government. This is who owns it. You know, like that's what it's for. Attached to your bank. Well, I mean, yeah, you're you're still gonna have to pay taxes on whatever you make from crypto, so you, you can't get away with not putting in. Yeah, I mean that's uh, the thing. That's how it's always been, though. That's how it's always been. Well, you could still use it for money laundering, crypto. 
Yeah, people still use that for it's pretty laundry. It's super easy. You just go to Nice Hash, and then you you take your laundered money and you buy a shit ton of hash rate and spend it on altcoins, and find like uh, twenty blocks, and then you know you have clean money coming out. Yeah, or you can just easy. use a tumbler, or you don't even need to do that. You just go get like some Monero or some yeah uh, Zcash, and then they'll never be able to figure out who where your shit's coming from. Yeah, dude, you can, yeah, you use can just nice buy hash. hash power right there. Yeah, just go buy some hash power, baby. Start mining. Pick your ant miner, CPU mining, yeah. dude. Yeah, bro. Just get a, a yeah, peta bro. hash and, you know, throw in all your dirty money. Yeah, dude, look at that. You can get one peta hash for that right there. 0. 0.0054 BTC. It's only $284 right there. Hash yeah, it up. A day. Hash it up. Yeah, but NFTs are used for money laundering, too, as well. It's because now it's even easier. Now they don't even have to create a private auction and have people go there and all that bullshit. No, they can just throw up some NFTs and the other person goes and buys them and money's laundered. Yeah. That's the, the whole point that I think a lot, a lot of people have seen. And then even more so, it's like the original idea for like selling art with NFTs is like when somebody bought the NFT... They were supposed to also get a fucking physical copy of the artwork. Yeah. Which never happens. And the other problem that I've always seen has just been the size. It's like every NFT is the same size because you can only yeah. fit this much. And I was trying to make this like one super boss ass NFT that I was going to call the, the Russian doll. And... I just couldn't do it. Like I could do, I could, I made it, I could get it. I just could not get it to be small enough. Yeah. That's the problem. And that's the problem that's going to be moving forward is because that's not only a limitation of Ethereum itself. It's also the same limitation on these other things. So like the NFT idea was a good idea in the beginning, but the way that people are using it right now ultimately is going to destroy no, it shouldn't be an art marketplace. There's there's other uses for NFTs. I mean, you could use them to to um, catalog and to archive things, and um, you you could pretty much use them for anything that you would need a notary for. Yeah. He puts notaries out of business completely. Yeah, it's a digital notary section. I just had to notarize something just for my car earlier today. Yeah, and if you just attach that to the blockchain which in a couple of years you probably will, then you would have never needed to get a notarized signature there. So, Ever. Some of these NFTs are really dope, though. Yeah. I check out my little RGB, my 22-second video. Buy it for $2.69, $11,000. And <sighs> NFTs... What a rate, what a fucking crazy place. So, um, I didn't ever ask you about, uh, Esteban. Yeah. So I remember coming over to the Z at law file. Uh, any thoughts, anything? Um, there were a couple things I was still trying to keep under wraps at that time. So I, I didn't say everything. Um, because you didn't trust uh, the step on either? Yeah. I hate that guy. Well, I don't hate him, but... He showed himself. Ah! Go faster! This was the thing that I was going to ask right here. Lies and damn lies. As I researched the articles, Z shared what he claimed. You're talking about J1337? Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is a song. I remember J one three three seven posted on Steam it forever ago saying I'm not Z from Cicada three. Oh, that's so funny. I mean, it's really weird that there was the ghost guy too. The yeah. ghost was his name Dustin. Yeah, Dustin. Dustin Goldstein or some some Goldstein something like that. I don't remember. It was Dustin something. That's weird. 
I just remember all this stuff. I mean, I didn't even realize that I was just searching for you, and I even found that you had talked to the Phoenix Enigma. Or did you actually talk yeah. to Corey? Uh, I did, and we kept trying to set up an interview, but we missed each other, and then tried to set it up again, and then I think he left me on red, or was it like, saying oh i'll get back to you next week and never got back to me he just disappeared i feel like he just disappeared i don't even know what he does nowadays His website's still up yeah is, let's see on d live nowadays uh i think so i don't know i'm checking right now oh, he doesn't even have anything on the calendar yeah oh but he did a show a day ago okay cool and his wife that's nice yeah that's nice i would, he could always been a cicada if he wanted to right yeah what else did we have over here um have you ever seen this everybody wiki of you uh yeah i don't know who put it up but really yeah yeah i thought it was weird there's something here, bitch. Oh wow, our old inter- yeah. our old interview still exists. So somebody actually put up something, your name on it, and look, it's got like, inbox viewer versus Thomas Schoenberger. It's got my links on it. It's got a step on on it. Elon Musk yeah. and Twitter. At the re- oh, <laughs> to remember the future tweet, dude. What? Yeah, wait, which that was from a book. It. it- <laughs> Foundation of Psycho History, right? Yeah. Or it's a Rothwell. I don't know. This is weird. There's so many different little things over here. Uh, why is my thing on United States documents? I don't know. What the <laughs> fuck? Put this on here. What are you fuckers did this shit? CIA, dude. Fucking CIA stealing shit from my fucking Google Drive and shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck you guys up. All right, it's fine. I didn't even know. I just was like clicking this around because these are the things that I found. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's pretty weird, dude. You didn't know that you had. You didn't know that you had that out there. Yeah, you got all this I good stuff. I saw it before, but I don't know where it came from or who put it. Mm, the game jacketing. Yeah. <laughs> well, did you ever talk to Dave Troy? Yeah, I did. What'd you think of that guy? Cool? Not cool? He's all right. All right, just all right, dude. Yeah, he's all right. Wasn't the greatest. He's got a whole battle with cryptocurrency now. Yeah, I thought that that was weird. I don't know why yeah. he doesn't like crypto now all of a sudden. Like everybody's like hating on crypto all of a sudden. And I'm just like, did you guys know something that I don't? Did you find out something that makes you mad? And now you're just going to hate crypto. Like what's going on? No, it's because, because they all bought crypto and then lost it. Uh, they, they all bought Bitcoin at, at 63,000 and went up to 69. And now it's at 53 and they're all pissed off. They lost money. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> That makes sense. Somebody named 3.14 NPC says, Jay and Ghost are good people. Stop defaming. We didn't defame them. We just were like, we didn't know who they were. Did we defame them? Uh, I didn't know who Ghost was, but I think uh, J1337, he was cool. I liked them. I didn't like him. I didn't like him, but I just didn't like his style and how he was coming at me all the time like a retard. I was like, yo, can you just like yeah. be normal for a second? Because I'm not I'm buying in all this weird shit you're doing. I'm not trying to have another Quinn bird, Michaels. Yeah. I'm not trying to have another Quinn Michaels on my shit. No, thank you. Oh, Jesus. That was fucked up, man. I still if have we nightmares. Him anybody at Quinn Michaels. Oh, my God. Dude, he was cicada, right? Dude, he was fucking. He was Thomas. Amphetamine. Oh, he was amphetamine? Yeah, I don't know what he was yeah, on, he... but. You yeah. are what you eat, right? He was all amphetamine. How come, what's up with you and all this Philema shit, dude? You in a you in a Satan, bro? No. 
Better not. Uh, it, it was something that I grew up with because my dad was a perfect initiate from Ordo Templi Orientis, and my mom was a Wiccan. So, I mean, I, I didn't have a normal childhood growing up. I read a lot of the Ashtray Margentum texts and things like that. So, Did you ever kill, like, ever sacrifice a rabbit to, like, Molech or something? Uh, no, you, you don't do any of that. All they do in, in OTO is, like, talk about rituals and use symbology and that's it jerk each other off i guess dude do you ever you ever see this video of fucking akon over by like leptus magna and shit yeah this makes me happy right here this yeah that's is, cool this makes me happy to see that and then this girl right here, you know, like if she was ugly, I probably would have been mad, but she's she's pretty cute, so I'm, I'm all right with it. I'm just playing. Yeah. I, I don't mean that. It's cool, though. But I was just looking at this, and I've been following along, you know, trying to see what's going on. It just makes me wonder. I'm just ready for the next big thing. I look at all this stuff and think, oh, it was pretty cool, but it needs to be back out there some way, somehow. One day, I guess I'll get yeah. that. Uh, one day, I'll get that channel back. One day, <laughs> or or not, I don't know. I don't know. But what I, I do know, know is it's been interesting. So I guess uh, before we go for the evening, you got anything else to tell the peeps out there? No, I'm just I'm just chilling. If you guys got any questions, just ask away. But yeah, you guys got questions. You can also follow him on Twitter, Twitters at Cryptos Journal, which is, I believe, your super elite hacking organization or some shit like that. Oh, yeah. I, I've never hacked anything in my life, but people always call me a hacker. I just You're, do math. <laughs> well, is it like doing math, uh, being a hacker? Uh, apparently it is. I mean, I've never even used the Wi-Fi sniffer, so. What? That was a Wi-Fi yeah. sniffer. It just looks for Wi-Fi that's in your area that you could crack easily. Oh, wow. I mean, the last time that I tried to do that shit, you still have to do that manually. I'd be on, like, arrow crack, and I'd have to be like, arrow crack, dash A G. Yeah, that's, that's all it is, is, and like, then, arrow da, crack. Da, 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 I've never da, da. used that. Oh, I've used that shit. I yeah, myself. so you're more of a hacker than I am. Oh yeah, I know. I'm definitely. I I have to. Say, I'm definitely a hacker. Not a good one, but I know how to do some things, and I use it at my work a lot too. Now, it's just funny sometimes when they're like, "Oh shit, we can't log into the machine because we don't remember the password," and then I'm just like, "Hey, can you guys look over there for a second? All right, we're in. Yeah, that's like me, because I, I use a different password everywhere I go, and then I'm like, oh, is it this password? So I gotta brute force everything that I log into. Yeah, that's not good, actually. Yeah, I should have a password manager, but I'm lazy. I wouldn't use a password manager. I just remember all of them in my steel trap. Except yeah, for that's what I my bank password always gets fucked up whenever I'm not at my house and I type it in perfectly, it just doesn't work. I'm like, bank, why? And they're just like, it's for your security. And I'm like, <sighs> whatever. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, that's good, dude. Well, honestly, I appreciate you coming on and sharing all of this knowledge with us and giving us a little bit of insight into where you're coming from and all the stuff that you didn't tell some people back in the day because you're a sneaky motherfucker. Sneaky motherfucker. But we love you. Hey, no problem. Like, I mean, that's just amazing. I mean, just the fact that the 2013 thing, that's a that's a pretty huge deal. Even the fact that yeah. you, you're the one that got the 2017 message to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's on the wiki. You need to get another one put out and be all like, no, nah, they'll never do it. One of these days. I'm sure that one of these days somebody's going to solve that freaking puzzle. That Yeah. Primus. I don't know if it'll ever be me. A lot of times I've been wanting to to just say, "Hey, let's just let's just sign a PGP message that says uh, Marcus is a douchebag and sign it Z." But I haven't asked yet. 
I don't think do you think they're really gonna after all this time you think that that's how they would end it? I don't think so. Nah. <laughs> Absolutely if not. If I asked, they would they would tell me to fuck off. <laughs> so you fuck off. They'd be like, dude, we're not going to waste this beautiful thing on that shit. It's not worth it. <laughs> not worth it. It's not worth it. What do I think of Koran's on club? Uh I don't know. Isn't that fucking what just Zulu kind of I don't know, look it up. I don't know. It sounds familiar. That like the fucking chaos computer club? Or what about what's it called? The quantum or the club of the quantum cow. What do you win if you figure it out? Uh depression from Mm -hmm. wasting your time. Yeah. That's all I got from solving that was exposed. Depression. How to get a restraining order. I mean, it was fun, though. This it? Is this yeah. what we're looking at right here? This Facebook shit? I guess so. What's... What the fuck is this shit? I don't know. Corona's on. Is it a call? A lima. A Corona's on is a demon. Nah, man, we don't want no fucking demons. I'll fuck a demon up. Oh, is John D and Edward Kelly? I had no idea this even existed. Yeah, me either. The dweller in the abyss, believed to be the last great obstacle between adept and enlightenment. Thelemites believe that if he is met with proper preparation, then his function is to destroy the ego, which allows the meme to adept to move beyond the abyss of occult cosmology. Oh, while we're on this subject. So you see where it says uh, Koronzon and Chaos Magic. The content's three. So, I mean, what we used one picture of Eris in, in the 2017 puzzles, right? And then uh, it, it appears Lestat uh, helped create an article with Professor Laura Dilly. Says we, we used uh, Discordianism. Yeah, that's the same thing that the people from FT said. Yeah, and it's got nothing to do with Discordianism. It's, if anything, it has more to do with chaos magic, Thelema. But for me and the, the puzzles, most of my inspiration came from the Church of the Subgenius, which is, uh, it's Discordianism on crack. It's. <laughs> It's a completely culture jamming kind of 60s movement where uh, you worship the capitalist god J.R. Bob Dobbs and Eris is the the wife to uh, Jehovah One, the alien in space. And Jehovah One is all threatening the planet, so J.R. Bob Dobbs has to keep his pipe lit in conjunction with the ancient Indians. Uh, at all times, and if it ever goes out, then Jehovah One will take over the world. And I think that's really funny. It's fucking hilarious. So, yeah, so that's where most of it came from. It was not Discordianism, it was this. Well, I mean, it's Collective this audience. has roots in Discordianism. Yeah, it's got roots in Discordianism. It does mention the Golden Apple in the Book of the Subgenius, but it's got nothing to do with Discordianism. Does it? Does he? Robert Anton Wilson? Happy's Cartel? What the fuck? But yeah, they're very intertwined. Principal Discordia is completely satire, and a lot of people don't realize that, and so is the Church of the Subgenius. But they're totally different, and I, I just think that uh, there's no actual evidence that that Seven's exposed had any parts of Discordianism inside the puzzles, so yeah, I thought it was weird. No, I agree. It was very weird. And yeah, um, Ooh, see somebody as, says that they have a, a Casapina coming my way. Oopsie doopsie. <gasps> oh no! Somebody's Uh-oh. gonna subpoena me for something that doesn't exist. Oh god! Hey. Are we going to cook this guy the same way that we cooked the last person that sent us a subpoena? Because, I mean, unless you're bringing the best law firm in New York City that I beat, 
You ain't gonna go anywhere, bitch. And I'm doing the muscles. Say so you have zero crypto, but you have a thousand bucks <laughs> to spend. What would you buy? Not, uh, not crypto. Two RTX uh, 3060 TIs. Founders edition. I'd, I'd go buy like a graphics card and then sell that for double the price and then buy two more graphics cards and then do that again and yeah. then go buy some crypto. Well, every month Best Buy has uh has drops for the 3060 Ti Founders Edition for 450 MSRP and you could resell it for a thousand so. I see you go. So we'll buy two then sell them. They go buy two more then sell two more. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, dude. Well, we, this is really nice, you know, like Discordianism, that kind of thing is funny. You know, I I enjoy having the fun, but it's really weird where some of yeah, these yeah. people went with their ideology. Like, this is probably, where is it? It's there was, completely it. satire. Oh, yeah. The Daily Dot. I was Dot. on this article, yeah, with Jess Klein, and then she also interviewed Jim Stewart in this. Yeah, she says that she reached out to me, but I don't ever remember her getting out to me until I went and looked at my Facebook request messages and then hid it in there. There was one from Jessica Klein, and she gave me oh, exactly, yeah. like, two days to get back to her. And yeah, I, she was I on a block deadline. I blocked this. messages. I didn't know that she was on a deadline, but it was just funny because yeah. if she would have talked to me, it would have changed her whole entire article because, like, QAnon had nothing to do with Steemit. Nobody was promoting Q on Steemit. Literally the only person that had posted anything on there related to Q was generally me because I was making fun of it as we were going along. Yeah, I I only said like the early on people were talking about Cicada, then uh, eventually like a year later they started posting about Q, but it wasn't the same people. So I don't know. I don't know either, man. But what I do know is that that idiot, an all-American cartel, was it something I said? Don't be afraid of manual online cyber stalking and gang stalking conspiracy could include you. And I already beat two major firms. Just a heads up. <laughs> do we need to start going to... So, uh, dude, isn't that the guy that was like working with Thomas Schoenberger back in the day that was getting all of his info from Thomas? <laughs> I'm going to subpoena uh, you. I don't know. If you actually subpoena oh, me, I'm going to fucking destroy you. In every way possible. Rico. Using your own emails. <laughs> so, why do people keep saying Rico? Yeah, like, you know how many That's times people understand. have said Rico to me over the last four years, and then Rico never happens because I never did anything wrong? <laughs> the only way that you could ever... Uh, even in a civil case, ever ever say that Rico is happening racketeering is if there was a contractual agreement between two people, mm -hmm. and uh, it's between the business and the the actual person. So you can't do Rico. You, you, I mean, if there's no contractual obligation, then it falls under a different law. Mm -hmm. It falls into a different law. I don't know. I think his name was Julio, right? It's Julio something. Should go ask Gabe. <laughs> oh, well. Well, I guess we should just cut it right there for today. I think we've talked for a while, a lot of shit. And it was really good. What do you think? Sounds good. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and giving us a little bit of a chasky. Don't be a stranger, my friend. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. And if you need anything, just reach out, dude. I'm, I will I'm a message away. I will do. Now I got All a new right. car, so you I'm gonna be on the road again soon. Hell yeah. Yep. So I'll see you around, bro. Zipping Thanks so around much. in the Prius. Yeah, zipping around yeah, in my no Prius, problem. dude. Fucking... Feels when good, man. Did Q MP3 was it intended to become a new puzzle? Uh, Q dot MP3 was just part of a puzzle. Uh, yeah, it was. So, 
I don't know if you know much about music theory, but oh. lost him. Yep. There we go. That works now. Yeah, there was a Q MP3 and a Q Wave, but I'm pretty sure that it was a Wave, wasn't it? Yeah, it was one of them. I don't remember, but there was yeah, like I think two. they're both the same thing. They both had the same thing. I think what it was a mistake. Somebody had uploaded the MP3 when they needed to upload the Wave or something like that. Because specifically in later on, I figured out that you can't. You can load an MP3 file with a hidden file, but it changes it into a wave. And all of the programs that currently exist out there to do it easily can only do it into a wave. Although I have seen an MP3 that's had stuff embedded into it, although it doesn't require a program to remove. It. Yeah, because I was playing around with that shit, but I don't remember that one. We talked about that earlier, which was that QMP3 was something that you guys had just put in there and had nothing to do with anything else. It was something that yeah. I just used as a basis for moving my portion along because I was like, well, you know, I looked up the Q book. I figured out a couple of things about that and how it matched my kind of situation a little bit. And that's what we moved forward with. But, you know, we doesn't include you, doesn't include Thomas. It was only me taking that one portion at a time. And I think that's the biggest issue that most of the trolls out there that are stuck on this don't seem to understand is that, you know, Thomas wasn't involved with the creation of Q. That was me taking everything that I had stocked up so far and finding outside individuals to assist me with something. And then later on mentioned it to Thomas just to see what he would do. And it ended up that he started telling everybody that he was behind the shit and trying to manipulate the puzzle towards yeah. it. And they hit and he used the QMP3 specifically to try to say stuff like that because he was fed that information by none other than me. Yeah. Not really hard to it's not really hard to understand. It's just that, you know, everybody wants Thomas to be in control of Q because then they could say, oh, Mike Flynn and all these other people. But in reality, it's not as deep, you know, parallel construction only goes so far. Yeah, you still need evidence. Evidence. Oh, yeah, the Q2, I think, is the picture of Jesus and Pontius Pilate. Was it called Q2, or is that the coordinate 2? Well, I don't know. We still have that picture, don't we, somewhere? Oh, the hard drive with all the cicada stuff isn't plugged in. But we had good insights and stuff. Been a great show. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, man. I don't want to take too much of no your time problem. today. But I hope you have a good one, dude. Be safe out there, and uh, definitely... Be ready, because you know the troll will be coming. Yeah. Oh, and uh, the the man himself emailed me as we were doing this. I guess he's listening. He said, uh, remember the future was this insert for the 2017 puzzles that came from his friend Sam? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he came up with remember the future, so... Uh, if you're listening, Thomas, there's the, the credit you were looking for. Right. There's the credit. I mean, he gets right. credit for all of his shit. Nobody doesn't give him credit for all of his shit. He just hates the no, other I, shit I, that I he does. Credit. Easier if people are just, like, straight up about what they're about. And then, you know, sure, you're going to have to answer questions about everything else. But it's really not that difficult. Yeah. It's really not. All right. I'll appreciate you, brother. Yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. All right, man. Have a good one. All right. See you, dude. Peace out, brother. Bye. Well, it's been an interesting day. We've had a lot of good conversation. It seems like at the end there, the trolls decided to show up a little bit, but a lot of information was put out there. A lot of truth was put out there because that's all we could really do is just give the truth about what was really happening and how it 
meets into all this other stuff, you know. Guys like Richard don't didn't even have any connection to any of that stuff because they don't even weren't even involved. Weren't even involved. It's pretty simple to see exactly what he was involved in and how far back he was. He's got the evidence and everything. Nobody can fight that. Nobody could say that it's not real and it didn't happen. And I think that the mystery itself is pretty much done. The only thing left is figuring out what it says, the Libra Primus. And that's really the only thing left for a lot of people. We already know who's behind it. We know the people that wrote it. We know why they wrote it. The only thing we don't know is what they fucking wrote. That's it. And we've discussed the future on where these things are going. We see, you know, how it's not just me that got the short end of the stick in some ways. You know, other people have had to give up a lot of everything just to even have a little tiny bit of chance to be a part of this. So think about that. Make sure you guys get over to Twitter, follow Crypto Journal, check out his websites and stuff and do what you like, man. I'll drop the link in the description, but it makes a lot of sense, you guys. It does make a lot of sense. I don't know who DOB is. <sighs> oh, Dobbs. So think about it. Probably just about Pleroma. Well, I appreciate you guys being here today. Make sure you uh, hit the like button, subscribe, share this with your friends. Hashtag it with the Cicada 3301 because we all know that we ain't going to be getting any of the the cred skis for any of this stuff, but maybe just maybe some bigger channel out there that actually cares about this shit will pick up on it and put it out there because it's definitely gonna that piece of information is definitely gonna make somebody's year. So think about that. Anyway, much love. See you guys later. Adios.